I'm Atuba George and I bless God today for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Praise God. Hey, are you ready? Praise God. Hey, I'm so excited because I know what I'm expecting today. So are you ready to join me? Say with me, Father, I receive today my daily bread. Thank you. It's coming to me now. Angels, go. See to it that I receive today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, when we say this, open your mouth and declare it with us. Open your mouth and make the request with us. Why? Or oh, doesn't God know that he's supposed to give me? Hey, when I speak up, I'm announcing that I know that he knows, see? So that's why I'm not quiet about it. And I'm announcing that the angels will hear and know that they've got responsibilities and they are being expected. So expect a miracle today, praise God. Thank you, Father, for today's broadcast. Your word is coming to us in real time and it is causing a change in us to the name of of your glory thank you precious father i declare burdens are being lifted right now yokes are being destroyed in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god thank you holy spirit are you ready now we've been talking how the word of god works in us he says be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How does your mind get renewed? The word of God says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. See? The word of God builds you up. And the more the word of God builds you up, the more you begin to realize, ah, the day you come to the understanding that everything about your life has been finished already, that is the day your blessing starts working. Everything you would need today, everything you would need this week, everything you will need next week, next month, next year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years from now, everything you would need, God, has given to you. I didn't say he will give it to you. I say he has given it to you. And that's the reason he gave us the Holy Spirit. I was sharing this last week, Thursday, in our, in our fellowship meeting. And by the way, today by 6 p.m., make sure you join us in, 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 in our fellowship meeting. Now, if you're not in the city of Abuja, you, you can join us online. But if you're in the city of Abuja, Come down for fellowship. Come down and meet with us. The address is on the screen. Come down and fellowship. See, there is, there is something about that gathering and, and when the word of God is coming to us and, and, and we're just exploding on every side. Praise God. So, his word comes to us. And when it comes to us, we are changed we are transformed and we see this by how we make decisions you see just like i was sharing yesterday you are constrained see when the bible says the love of god constrains us what is the love of god is actually the word of god constrains us so now he takes you 
to a place by his word. And you begin to operate from that place. You are operating so perfectly in that place that you don't see any other thing but, but this truth. Now then, I said I was telling them on, on Thursday last week. The Holy Spirit, his desire is to be among the sons of men. That has always been his desire and his delight. Why? Because number one, he was there when the Father created everything. He was there. So, he knows every secret in the earth. He knows the thing you were born to discover. He knows. He knows when you are supposed to discover that thing. He knows. And your discovery is not going to be obsolete. No, 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 no. It's going to be new and updated. He knows. So, Jesus comes now and says to us, the disciples then, he says, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I go, he will come and he will guide you into all truth. What truth? The truth of everything that have been written concerning you. The truth of everything God has planned concerning you. Not shall plan, has already planned. The truth of every blessing you are supposed to receive on the earth, he has already given them. Listen, you see this earth, the earth is full. David speaking one day, he says, oh God, your, the earth is full of your mercy. Teach me your ways. It's a recognition. He said, the earth is full of your mercy. Teach me your ways. Meaning, see, people are crying, no mercy, no mercy. But I know the earth is full of them. But I can't see it normally until you teach me the paths to walk. Then I will see the mercy of God. Your struggling is too much because you don't understand the mercy of God. Your fighting is too much. Your crying is too much because you don't understand the mercy of God. And as the, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come. He will guide you into all truth. So what am I supposed to do today? Holy Spirit, you know what? I don't want to even try to know the way. I want to follow you right now. And everywhere you lead is where I'll follow. Now, that doesn't mean shutting down your intelligence, shutting down your brain, and just be walking like a zombie. God never called us to be like zombies. God called us to interact with him. But we get the ingredient of our interaction from him. You see? So, we use our brains to reason out his truth. Now, we have that ability. Ah, You know, sometimes we, when we are around certain people and then we begin to talk in our elements, someone without understanding is there and is wondering, what's wrong with these guys? Are they in this world? See, are they in this world? You know, we began to talk about spiritual experiences. Uh -huh. Look at these people. People are hustling, looking for money to feed. They are here talking about uh, uh, things that we don't even understand. They can't understand. Because, you see, if only the Holy Spirit will guide you and it takes a decision from you to keep you in that place where he becomes your guide, he does everything thing you need to be done. He shows you where to go, who to talk to, what to say. Now, you study. See, like a, like a preacher that I am, I study the scriptures. I read books. I listen to people. I do that for my own personal growth, not so that I will go preach. So I listen to all that. 
Now my wife knows me. Most times when I'm preparing to preach, you hardly find me studying and no, 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 no. At that point, I'm in the presence of God and I'm just like, Holy Spirit, what, what, what's on your mind right now? What's on your mind? That's all that's in my heart. That's all I want to know. That's all I seek for. What is on your mind? I will pray. And that's the, that's the, I'm not praying, Father, as I go. Oh, give me your word. No, I say, Lord, what's on your mind? This meeting I'm going for. I've been invited for this meeting and you permitted me to go for it. So what's on your mind, Lord? What, what would you have them eat today? And in the process of time, the Lord begins to share with me what's in his, share his thoughts with me. He begins to share his thoughts with me. Now, sometimes, if you're, if you're, if you're a preacher of the word, you know this. Sometimes you, you, you see the meeting ahead of time. And sometimes even when they're inviting you, you're already seeing what you're going to share. See? But then there are other times till you climb up the pulpit and <laughs> you say, your time starts now. <laughs> You've not heard anything. It is when you get up there, and, then, and, then, and funny enough, I think those are the moments I like the most. <laughs> it's God. Yeah. Because I realize at that moment, the intensity of your faith to minister to God's people is high. Because I've learned also, when he tells you what to preach, you don't take what he has told you and go start studying and get all the points and come and start delivering a lecture. Nah. He tells you this is what we're going to be talking about. He is only giving you that for information purpose. He's not telling you go preach this. He's telling you this is what we are going to be talking about. So you align your minds. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm ready. You may read one or two things or maybe remember some things you've studied about that. But if, if you are experiencing this thing, you will know that you don't allow your knowledge to become a blockage to the Spirit of God in ministry. Because you find out that sometimes, even when you're ministering on a subject that you knew before, he told you to minister, in the place of ministry, new things are coming to your spirit. New things are coming to your knowledge. And like, whoa, I never knew this before. Now that's how you know you are not ministering alone and you're not ministering based on what you know. You are ministering by the Spirit of God. And you learn from it. That's why as a good minister, you must listen to yourself. Except all your messages are things you have studied and read and came to relate to the people so you feel I know them. But if you're truly administering by the Spirit of God, you will know there are things to learn from the message you preach. Many times after a meeting, as I'm going back home, I tell my wife, what did I talk about today? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, what did I talk about? And I get the messages. I want to listen to it. Why? Because there are things I said that I need to hear again. So that now it will become part of my mind, not my spirit. My spirit is clean. My spirit is full of knowledge. My spirit, you see, because the, my spirit is the same spirit with God. There is no difference between my spirit and the Holy Spirit. They are one. My spirit is the Holy Spirit. I don't have any other spirit from the Holy Spirit. So what is it doing when I, when I function by the spirit? I can actually function by the spirit. And then after function by the spirit, and then I come back to the flesh. And do, that's why I see people, they, they, you know, when they minister, all manner of things are going on. But then on their day-to-day -day life, the kind of decisions they make, terrible decisions. And you wonder, how come that man of God married that kind of woman? Didn't God tell him? He didn't know he was supposed to subject the choice of a wife to the voice of God. He didn't know that. So he felt, you know, as a man of God, I'm supposed to marry the finest girl in church. You know, you know how people think, oh, that girl, you know. And then he goes with his intimidation, intimidating power, you know, as a pastor, as a man of God. He said, look, you're my wife. And the girl is confused and don't know what to do. Say, you are my wife. And then they get married. Yes, she's the most beautiful person in church. And now she begins to trouble him every day. Why? He didn't subject his choice of a wife was not a place, was not from the place of the sanctified ones. 
The sanctified ones will go before the Lord and say, Lord, I know there are many ladies, but you have to tell me the choice that you have made for me. Now you hear even preachers tell you, ah, don't, don't, don't bother asking God those kind of questions because God doesn't give wives. They, you see, when they talk like that, you just know automatically they have not gotten to that place of sanctification. If you ask, Every choice of yours is regulated by one thing, the word of God. And my time is up because it's regulated also by the word of God. Praise God. I know, I know you have been blessed. Praise God. But I'm going to see you tomorrow. God bless you. And, and listen, this evening, join us. And the, the information is on the screen. And get power, get empowered and get blessed. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.